after Blood and Fire got going, got approached by Ireland. Um, they said, at that time, it was the original people working at Ireland. Trevor Wyatt was the A&R. Um, I've known Trevor since he worked on the vans, uh, the delivery van uh, for Ireland Records, and he worked his way up to A&R. Um, good guy, friend of mine. Uh, he's actually been down here to visit us in uh, in the West Country, you know. He uh, said, would you want to do a Lee Perry compilation? I said, yeah. So he suggested that we do uh, a kind of best of the two various artist comps that Ireland had put out. I said, oh man, Trevor, you got tapes. I said, there's in the archive. I said, I know you've got tapes. And he was reluctant at first to get these tapes. Oh, I don't want to get tapes out. I said, you know, I said, all you got to do, when you're ready to go home, you get a tape recorder set up in your office. I'll come in and run tape. You can go home if you want. I said, and plus, I'll get Dave Katz who wrote the definitive biographies of Scratch. So he said, all right, and I can leave you to it. Yeah, I said, of course, we'll do it. You know, I said, Dave's the, Dave's the expert on Scratch. When I first met Dave, he came around my house in East London. And um, he spent about an hour looking through my records, you know, Lee Perry. At that time, I had about five or 600 Lee Perry singles, you know. So we were friends from that time. And at that time, he was living a mile away in East London, Stratford, East London. And I was living in Forest Gate. So I knew Dave. He wrote his book, uh, which has gone on to revised editions. And he's written uh, his oral history. You know, these are essential books. So me and Dave went into Trevor's office one afternoon, five o'clock. He's got the tape recorder set up, got a tape on there, run the tape. I looked at Dave, I said, I've never heard this before, this version. I know the tune, but not this version. And Dave, and Dave said, no, me neither. And it went on. We didn't put another tape on. Never even heard this. Never knew it existed. This time, now Trevor, he doesn't want to go home now. You know, uh, he realises something can happen. So we ended up doing a three CD set. My idea, what else to call it? Archaeology, like a pun on archaeology. The only drawback, they should have got intro to design it, but they had an in-house designer. He didn't do a bad job on it, but with intro it would have been better. Just my opinion. But in any, any case, that one, that sold 86,000 the first year for a three CD set, Lee Perry. And um, I'm really happy with it, you know. So was Dave, you know, we would have loved to have done another one because there's still more tape there. Ireland is all changed now. The people who were there then, they aren't there anymore. But Chris sold the company, Chris Blackwell. Trevor's retired. Um, people like who was in the office at the time, Suzette Newman. Jumbo Van Rainham went back to South Africa, where he died. Lovely man, decent guy. So it's all it's all changed. Ireland's gone. It's now owned by Universal. And yep. when you're dealing with people like that, they don't give a toss about fans, you know. Uh, not unless you're in with the in crowd, you know. What they want is products. What they want is to look at the balance sheet, you know. That's what it's about. That's the world we live in. You know, maybe they don't want to do another. There's probably enough for a double CD there, you know. <laughs> they got the tapes. You know, have they got the tapes for those George Flaith 12 inches? Have they They got the, certainly got the African tapes, you know, the two African guys who, who turned up in Jamaica. They got that tape. And there's other stuff. Who knows what they got? I mean... Roast fish and cornbread, the dub of that ran over six minutes, but only four and a half minutes turned up on the archaeology. Mm -hmm. I decided 
read it down. But, you know, that's his decision. He was in charge, so to speak. He was the executive producer. He was the in-house man up island. But, you know, I was happy to work with Trevor. I like him. He's a good guy. And he'd given me enough gigs over the years. He, um, I suggested they reissue the tour of Ernie Wrangling LPs that Island play out in the 60s. And from that, Trevor got an idea to produce Ernie. And Ernie um, did the Below the Baseline LP. I got the gig right in the notes, you know. Master guitarist. I did a couple more for that Jamaica jazz series they had short-lived. I did one with Monty Alexander. I did the notes for that. Fabulous pianist, jazz pianist. Yeah, I mean, that short-lived series, that was a nice series. Like I say, the Arcology, I look back, I play that myself, you know what I mean? Um, there's a few compilations of my own that I play. I play the Darker Than Blue, uh, which is all the reggae versions of Soul Tunes. Uh, because um, I know a lot of people who collect soul and they kind of look down on reggae and go, oh, no, it's just fifth-rate versions of soul tunes. So I thought, no, that's not true. There's some really, you know, you're telling me songs by Delroy Wilson, Norton Ellis aren't soulful enough, you know. Um, and they're, So I put to, uh, together a compilation called Darker Than Blue, that came out again, out of a visual idea. Um, Magnum is a photographic agency. One day I'm sitting at home, a guy phones up, Australian guy, and he says, um, I work for Magnum, and I've been looking through the files, the archive. He said, and I come across these photos, uh, taken, some taken in Jamaica by one photographer, and some taken in London of uh, dances in the Midlands. And uh, one of the, uh, uh, he said, I'll send you the photos, have a look. I said, but Magnum, I said, Magnum charge all two grand for one photo usage. You know, they're the top, the, 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 the top photographic agency in the world. He said, we can work something out. I thought, yeah, okay, let's, let's have a look. So he sent me these photos. There's a photo there on Darker Than Blue that is just a whole lot of black people all looking at the photographer. And I thought, yeah, you put a drop of blue screen over that and it's darker than blue, you know? Um, I borrowed a record off of Mark Ainley at Honest John's Records and he, he got the rights to... Um, put it out on vinyl. At that time, we weren't doing vinyl. In retrospect, I wish we had put it out on vinyl because he just used the black and white photo. So it wasn't, you know, darker than blue. But he suggested the uh, the Lloyd Chalmers version of darker than blue. I was going to use the Devon Russell version of darker than blue because I knew Devon really well. I made a record with him in Jamaica in 1992. Uh, which um, I lost about 5000 on that. But, you know, at th those days I was earning a bit of money. That was the money off of Ireland for tougher than tough. So I, re I paid for Devon to go to Jamaica. I paid Sly £600 for the new rhythms that he made. And, um, you know, uh, then I gave it to Devon and said, OK, you deal with it. I, I can't do any more. And, um, you know, he did a good job on the visual. He used, when I when I did it, I played it to Bunny Lee. Bunny said, you, Bunny said to me, you should have got Pat Kelly to sing those songs. And in retrospect, maybe he's right. You know, I mean, Devon, I mean, rest his soul. He was he would a nice enough bloke, but um, probably Pat Kelly would have done better. Or maybe I could have used... Pat Kelly and Junior Mervyn, you know, um, Lloyd Parks, you know, any one of those singers who can do that high, that Curtis Mayfield style. But, you know, it, it, it's another learning experience. But, um, yeah, Darker Than Blue, I loved it. 
we had a, at that time we had um, a web forum for blood and fire, and all these roots guys, all these all these white guys who thread up and uh, you know talk about um, blessed love and all of that. They didn't like all that soulful stuff, you know. It wasn't article roots, but. You can't tell me that John Holt isn't a roots artist. You can't get more roots than John Holt or Delroy or Alton or uh, or Lloyd E. Lloyd Chalmers, for that matter. You know, these people are the roots of the music. So um, not only that, at that time, Soul Jazz had come out with uh, their 100% Dynamite, and there was a few soul covers on there. So I thought, oh, I can do better than that. So I did darker than blue, but um, yeah. Later I worked for Soul Jazz on a few things. You know, did some notes, did did the text in a couple of books, did a book of labels, a book of album covers, wrote a foreword to a Studio One book of uh, album covers that they put out. But um, again, it's all about control. If I don't have the control that I had on Blood and Fire, I'm not too interested in doing anything. Um, I, as I say, I don't go looking for it. I'm retired. I like listening to my, you know, Hank Mobley records on my Jimmy Smith LPs, you know. Uh, that's what I do. I listen to music all day. All kinds of music, you know, mostly, well, I say all kinds. Jazz, soul, stuff like that. Um, you know, that's it really.